Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate or to find the reference angle of a given set of angles in degree measure. And so when we're identifying angles in degree um, or the reference angle, the main important thing is the reference angle is the acute positive angle between uh, the terminal side of your angle and the x-axis. Now, there's a couple different rules that we have for them. And that's basically whenever our angle is positive. And you can see I do have two examples of angles that are negative. And I'll kind of show you two different ways to kind of think of that, uh, the kind of the long way as well as um, the long way, as well as kind of just the short way of looking at it and be like, oh, that's the reference angle. All right, so first of all, though, a reference angle technically you know, is going to be obtuse angle. But um, let's just go and take a look at this angle here, 50 degrees. So remember, we're always going to start at our terminal side, and we're going to go to our, our initial side, to our terminal side, is 50 degrees. Well, the reference angle, this one does not have a reference angle. The reference angle is the angle of itself. That's why we really don't use. Um, that's why we use a definition of it being an obtuse angle. However, if you, do have a refer if you are asked for a reference angle and the angle is acute, then we know that I'm going to represent the reference angle as theta prime. So theta prime is equal to 50 degrees. It's going to be exactly the same. Okay. Now let's go ahead and look at 120 degrees. So if I have 120 degrees, that's roughly going to be somewhere like here. Um, so I say theta is equal to 120 degrees. Now the reference angle, again, is going to be the acute angle between the terminal side, which is here is my terminal side, and the x-axis. So that's going to be from here to here. So that reference angle is always going to be you know, positive. So we need to say, all right, well, how do I go from, if I, from here to here is 120, how far do I need to get to the x-axis? Well, whenever you have something that's in the second quadrant, we basically have a formula for you. And the second quadrant, so the first quadrant is that theta is equal to theta prime. The rule for the second quadrant is you're going to do 180 minus theta equals theta prime. Okay, where theta prime again represents our reference angle. So in this case, I'm basically going to do 180 minus 120. These are all in degrees, I probably should say. Yep. Okay, 180 minus 120 equals 60 degrees. So therefore, theta prime equals 60 degrees. Or you could have just done the math in your head, you know, say, oh, well, all the way halfway around is, six, uh, is 180 degrees, 180 minus 120, 60 degrees. Makes sense, right? OK. Um, the next one is negative 155 degrees. Now, this one kind of messes everything up. Um, and I wanted to do to at least two negatives, just so you kind of understand them. However, really, the best thing to always do with a negative number is to find the coterminal angle, meaning we would add it to 360 to find the positive value. But negative 150 degrees is going to be kind of very similar to this one. Um, it's going to be somewhere right on here. But the terminal side is going to be exactly the same. right? So there's theta, which is equal to um, negative 155. Now, if I found the coterminal angle, basically what I'd do is I would add 360 to it. So I'd add 360 around to be able to find the measurement. So if I do, you know, I don't even want to do my head. Um, I should. All right. Um, 155, that's going to be 200 and 205, which would be a positive answer. So the coterminal angle is the same thing as theta equals um, 205. OK, so what I'm trying to basically tell you is you could do theta equals negative 155, or you could also do theta as 205. And basically, we want to write that we always, the formula works for when the angle is positive. It doesn't work for when the angle is negative. OK? Um, so that's basically uh, theta here. And now what we do is when it's in the third quadrant, which you can see this one is, you could take the third quadrant. The rule is going to take um, theta minus 180 equals theta prime. Well, my theta in this case is 205, as I mentioned, minus 180, which is going to leave me with, I guess I should do that. So I have um, 205 minus 180 is going to leave me with 25. So therefore, that means that, oh, the angle, right, is the, dip, is the acute angle between the terminal side, which is the same for the negative or the positive angle, between the terminal side and the x-axis. And this example is 25 degrees. Okay, So theta 
prime is 25 degrees. However, I gave you to the negative because if you, got, if you know that the angle, all right, here's the negative, right? The negative angle goes from here to here. Well, what's the difference between to get to the x-axis? If you know it's negative, negative 125, 155, you know you can just add a negative 50, 25 to get you to a negative 180. And just remember, it's always positive. The angle, reference angle is always going to be positive. So it'd be you know, 20, uh, positive 25. But again, if you're going to be using the formula, if you're given a negative angle, rewrite it as a positive, which I did. So I did that by taking negative 155 and adding 360. That was my coterminal angle. I found the coterminal angle. That gave me 205. Then I plugged the 205 into my formula um, for reference angle, and that's how I got 25 degrees. And that actually is all degrees here. OK, so let's go ahead and do the exact same thing with negative, um, one, negative 20. So if I have an angle negative 20, all right, and this is exactly where I, I kind of go through. Remember, guys, the angle is the acute angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. Well, guys, <laughs> there's only one acute angle here. If that's theta, if theta is equal to 20, well, then we know that theta prime has to also equal to 20, right? There's no other angle that you can have your angle be that it's going to, um, there's no other point where your angle can be acute to the x-axis. So theta prime has to also equal 20 degrees. And just remember, your reference angle is always going to be positive. Um, I will just show you the long way, just, just in case. Um, but anyways, we always find it. We always find our angle. So I do negative 20 plus 360 again. Again, I'm finding the coterminal angle, which is 340. Then to find the reference angle in the fourth quadrant, The formula for the fourth quadrant is going to be 360. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, 360 minus theta equals theta prime. Well, in this case, we'd have 360 minus 340, which equals 20, which we already knew, which was simple, right? So I just wanted to kind of show the long way. Um, however, the easy way, especially when you have negative angles, I think it's easier just to kind of forget about the formulas. However, if you did have a large, if I did give you, instead of giving you theta as negative 20, if I said, all right, fine, theta is 340, well, then all you'd simply need to do is subtract it from 360 to find the reference angle, right? And the same thing. If I said, OK, instead of theta being negative 155, what if I gave you theta is 205, right? Then you would go ahead and find, um, use, uh, go ahead and use the formulas to find that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you identify your reference angles. Thanks.